Hello and welcome to another interesting episode of The Magnet. And as usual, The Magnet, we know we bring to you eminent and interesting business personality. Last week, we spoke to you on advertising and we brought Mr. Yinka Adibayo, an advert guru, who was explaining to us on how one can become an advertiser and what he entails to become an advertiser. Yinka's foray into the field of marketing communication started with Promosav Limited, Surrey Levy, where he had his internship between 1989 and 1990. After his graduation in 1993, he proceeded to Imo State for his National Youth Service Corps and served with the Public Relations Department of the Imo State Police Command. Based on his outstanding performance during his internship, Yinka was immediately absorbed into Promosav Limited as a full staff after his youth service. His consistency high performance earned him so many awards in the agency, where he also emerged as staff of the year. In 1998, he proceeded to University of Adwekiti, Ekiti State, for his MBA program with specialization in marketing and attended the prestigious Lagos Business School for the Advanced Management Program, AMP. Yinka has been a consistent high performer winning awards, getting recognized and rewarded in all the places he has worked, including Media Rich OMD, as a dedicated and committed staff. His passion for the job and knack for excellence can be attested to by those who have worked with him or know him. He has delivered several papers on advertising, marketing, negotiation, entertainment industry, and supported a couple of media organizations in their repacking and reposition efforts for growth and profitability. Jinka was in 2019 recognized by one of industry magazine brand campaign as one of the 50 most influential marketing communication practitioners in Nigeria. And in 2020, he was also recognized as outstanding media personality of the decade. He currently heads up the procurement arm of OMG Rika Business and designated as Executive Director, Media Investment. He is a full member of Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria, APCON, and ESCO member of Media Independent Association of Nigeria, MIPAN. Owing to his strong belief in extending the frontiers of knowledge, Yinka is a faculty member of Alphabet Media Academy, where he lectures and impacts marketing communication skills and knowledge to the upcoming professionals. Yinka Adibayo is a good family man. He got married to Yetunde on the December 30th, 2000, 20 years ago. God in his infinite mercy has blessed the union with four amazing children. Yinka loves reading, networking, engaging in intellectual discussions. He plays table tennis and football. He is an ardent supporter of Manchester United Football Club. As Yinka would always say, you cannot be packaging brands and leave yourself unpackaged. Thank you very much for still seeing with us, Sam. Thanks for having me. So last week, you spoke to us on advertising, the rudiments, how one can become advertising, and what, thing, what um, things people look out for, especially when it comes to being creative and the likes. So this leads to my first question. Can anybody or everybody be a practitioner? Anybody can, provided you've, gone, you've yeah. taken the necessary training. More importantly, here at least I like, like, like to say, I mentioned the fact that there are some basic courses that you need to take at the undergraduate level. That even if you're into other fields, there's actually the regulatory body, which is the yeah. Advertising yeah. Practitioner yeah. Council of Nigeria, who organizes courses and training to ensure that you are well shaped and you are well molded for that field. So anybody who is interested or has passion for it can actually go. But it's important to take that training so that you are not seen or perceived to be practicing advertising illegally. Legally. So it's very important. And that, those training too has such that will, will I mean, prepare you for the kind of challenges you get to meet as you go along. So, so what's the role of our apprenticeship in the profession? Well, I'll say like, it's, it's a major role. A major role in the sense that you see Unfortunately for many of our young guys are too much in a hurry. Right, they get so carried away by the razzmatazz of the industry rather. Because at the point, your first thing, I always tell people, for me, I have four cardinal people that takes into this profession. First one is passion. Mm -hmm. Second one is perseverance. Then the third one is positioning. Then the third one will naturally be patronage. Mm -hmm. So which means value. So meaning you need to have passion for the job for the because job. advertising is not attractive as it starts. No expected <laughs> that you get into it, you see money. But, but many of our young guys these days are always looking for money. They get carried away by the kind of suits, by the kind of jeeps, by the kind of car that people ride. But forgetting that in life, hmm. if your height is greater than your debt, fault hmm. becomes inevitable. Definitely. So meaning is important for them to deepen themselves. To learn. Ensure that you learn that's where passion comes in. You persevere, you endure. I recall this when we had to carry humanity tip to NTA. Hmm. There's no media that I don't know in this Lagos part of the training. 
But when I open my mouth to speak now, people listen yeah, because it's gone it. from here. You need to invest it. What you don't so you cannot trip. There is no elevator to success. You need to pay the price. That's why expensiveness is important. There are days when I've got into the profession, I spent days reading up emails Learning. and letters, Learning. memos, just for you to understand Sandy what graph. is being said, how it is being said, why it is being said, what exactly is the message that is being communicated, so that you have deep understanding and you are well entrenched. So I think it's very important for people to really get entrenched, to deepen themselves, so that when they stand up to be counted, the figures yeah. will cancel something. So do you think there's any difference in the practice of advertising between um, electronic and then you know, we talk about print. Is there similarity? Are there different practices in advertising uh, print? Well, and basically, I think for me, I think the basic how I break it down is the fact that we need to understand the fact that there are two different um, medium, and you need to realize the fact that print hmm. is usually a space medium measured in inches, right. while TV or radio, they are time medium measured in seconds. Hmm. That counts for something. And that should ultimately determine and guide you in how you shape your message. I can spend hours writing copies on press because people will take time to read. read it. If I can't do that on radio and TV, it has to be short, yeah. precise, apt. Punchy. Whatever you need to say, say it, make it brief. In fact, there's what called ABC. Accuracy, brevity, and clarity. clarity. You need to make sure that you do so. So all of those things should be the guiding place. So they have two different and should be handled differently. Even as a media buyer, that should equally guide you in what you buy to say, hey, when I'm negotiating for print, I'm actually negotiating space that's guided in podcast. issues. Yeah, While I'm talking time. to people, I'm actually negotiating for time, measure in seconds. So when we're talking about um, advertising when it comes to for when it's especially particularly to content producers, our uh, media stations, and um, advert uh, advertisers, media tracking comes in. What exactly is the role of media tracking in advertising? Well, the role of media tracking really is to be able to gather competitive data. Mm. That should be the primary role. But unfortunately, the reverse is the case there. Mm. And like I always say, now here, what we use them for is for them to track, to say, hey, I've <laughs> booked 20 do. spots on that station. Please let me point. confirm that yeah. I've actually gotten 20 spots. Right. And that, of course, there's a reason behind that, really, because I think it started from the problem that we have in the industry, which has to do with the issue of distrust. And that is actually established where you have a station where some clients will book 20 spots and they will only I suppose maybe about 10 or 15 and see, get paid for right. 20. And that's why client they need to have this trust party. But I think to a large extent, the industry has grown now to the level where even media owners are taking the pain to do even to do more. more. But that's the question right. is, the, the tracking agents, are they well equipped? Well, I, I think, yes, definitely. I think it's probably the, techno the technology rather that is coming in place. Here. Maybe we do not have the um, technology know how to so it's, do it's, the tracking. It's an industry it that you need to continuously invest in. Mm -hmm. Technology is developing by the seconds. I won't say by day, by seconds everywhere. So you need to constantly research and be able to equip yourself. And I think that's what many of the media organizations and even independent producers are doing right now. Many of them are not resting. Mm -hmm. They are bringing in technology, new cameras, new this to improve Please. their output. So the tracking agency equally need technology to to to, to flow along by making sure that their business is well funded as well so that they can because your ability to track me is dependent on you being able to be more equipped than i am if the person you are chasing is better equipped than you that's chasing him you can be ready you'll be out wrong Definitely. so oh, well, thank you very much so we'll be going on a quick break now to look at the circle club um, webinar which was an education let's take a look Education has been addressed the bedrock of the society. The realization that the government cannot do it all prompts some other groups like the private sectors and non-governmental organizations to complement government efforts. Isaka Club 81 has excelled in the provision of scholarship to deserving students cutting across all clans in Isaka land. To further raise the awareness and consciousness of people, the club organized a webinar tagged Education in 2021 and Beyond on Sunday, 27th of December 2020 to replace the town hall meeting earlier scheduled. The webinar had the convergence of representatives of the clans in Ado North with presentation from panelists from diverse backgrounds. In his opening remarks, Dr. Mahmoud Dako, President Isaka Club 81, welcomed guests and gave an overview of the educational situation while highlighting some of the achievements of the club. Isaka Club 81 has done a lot in education. We have provided furniture and size equipment for labor laboratory worth over 15 million to schools in the zone for the past 10 years. 
We are also involved in welfare of the of our people, including uh, head. For us in a donut, the first primary school, the first secondary school was in the 1960. That was Alejandro Martinez. Okay. This was quickly followed by Sir John Fuka, Sir Peter Sagedebode, Sir Angela Sebzaibu, and Mamadou College, or as I school as well. That same six, in the same 60, 1963, a total institution, out of Polytechnic, came into existence. So it is clear to all of us now we have actually been late starters in education. In his keynote speech, the Vice Chancellor of Edo University, Iamo Uzarewe, spoke on the contribution of tertiary institutions to educational development in Edo North, using Edo University as a case study. There are a number of notable tertiary institutions in Edo North. Uh, there are, however, several of these who are non functional and require government intervention. Now, the one and only university in the whole of Edo North at present is the Edo University Yamo Zari. This university has made enviable achievements within a short time and has become the pride of Edo North in particular and Edo State in general. The government has, however, been making giant strides in the teaching hospital project at Edo University Yamo. I want to say that the teaching hospital project in Edo University Yamo is more than 50% complete. The Edo University project. The Edo University was ranked third best university in Nigeria by National Universities Commission in her open educational repository ranking in 2018. In her presentation and X-raying the numerous challenges confronting education in Edo North, Mrs. Queensley Ohumali, a retired director of education, hinged on poverty as the bane of most of the challenges while preferring learning centers and adoption of a child to train as some of the panels here. The biggest problem that is facing our schools is that of poverty. The next problem we have, I know our, our time is limited, is the homelessness. There are some children who are homeless. The next challenge is that of selfishness and corruption. The next problem again is infrastructure. If you look at our schools, primary and secondary, most of the buildings they have dilapidated and <laughs> they are pleading for rebranding. Principal Aslam Izuage, the president of ANCOPS, preferred more solutions to the inherent challenges to education in a donut in 2021 and beyond. That there is no solution to exam practice except we agree to do one thing, and that is change the orientation of the minds of the people. Preferring solutions to this problem is first of all getting government to agree that they have failed. The panelist done, the space was open for more discussions. Taking the lead is a long-standing member of the club and retired executive director of NTA, Barrister Grace Egbagbe, who spoke on tending to the educational needs of the indigents. A cycle club which one has been in the forefront of equipping schools, equipping labs. Why can't we also carry this to infrastructure, which is also the bane of education delivery in rural areas. Being educated will guarantee you a good job. And you know something? You're never too old to learn. Whether you're old or you're young, education is for everyone. Mr. Stephen Oshoke, in his brisk and concise presentation, focused on the role of government in the provision of quality education in a donor, while Barrister Patrick Inobeme the second vice president and chairman education committee gave insight into the role of non-governmental organization in enhancing quality education is on the contribution of ASAC Club 81 as a blueprint. First, the role of government in provision of quality education in ASAC land and in extension, I do not. I believe when we talk of government, we are also involved. Government should think more of the provision of qualified competent and committed teachers in all secondary schools in Asako land and Edo North in general. The role of NGOs as far as enhancing education of our people is concerned cannot be over And that is how NGOs too 
have grown and are encouraged to grow to take up this role, even when Western life, Western uh, values have taken over our traditional life that some of us now tell because they are educated, they no longer care about what is happening along uh, their communities or within the family system. The comments and questions session had His Royal Highness the Aid Onoje of South Ibia making his contribution, followed by others, including participants from the diaspora, with the questions ably answered by the relevant panelists. We are even talking of infrastructure. Let's even assume that the private organization decided to come, okay, we build all the buildings, we put all the infrastructures. The question is, are there teachers to teach the children? Even if they are teachers, how qualified are they to teach these children? The webinar has been adjudged as successful as a soccer club 81 is expected to go to the drawing board for the implementation of the various solutions preferred in collaboration with other stakeholders. Hi, my name is Ibrahim Olaguju, a mass communication graduate from a reputable Nigerian university. I had a short-term internship with Ames Media, and now I'm proud to say I am the co-anchor of our flagship program, the Magnet. I am Olola Deonyokoi. My journey in IMS Media started a few years ago as an intern after undergoing the ZAYA training. Now I can perform some administrative duties, plus presentation of highly rated television programs. My name is Bill Kizishala. And I'm Kabira Dekoye. We are both mass communication students of a Nigerian university. In less than two months of internship at Ames, it has been a wow of media practical practice. You can say that again, Kabira. I can do a stand-upper, conduct interviews, and even run narrations of short documentaries. Perfecting editing and studio directing. My desire to be a reputable cinematographer brought me to Ames Media. With shared determination and unequal training by veterans in the industry, I can operate cameras, edit, and run narration for television reports. Your aspiration to become a total broadcaster could be realized if you allow Ames Media to train and impact you. Avail yourself of Ames Media training facilities with top my television production studios to make a mark in your broadcast career. For more information on our training and media services, do call the number on your screen or visit our website at www imsmedia.com.ng Also follow us on all our social media and those are displayed on your screen. We can't wait to have you. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is still the magnet. Now with me here in the studio is still Mr. Yinka Adibayo and Advert Kuru. Thank you very much for sitting with us. Thank you. So before we went on, the, uh, on that break, we were talking about the role of media tracking agencies in um, and adverts. So what do you think, as an advertiser, what do you think you look out for? What specific things do you look out for um, in programs to sponsor, to sponsor programs? If there's a fit to the brand, of course, that will now inform to say, hey, there's a synergy between okay. all the focus of the program as and well as the future. focus of the brand. And once there's that synergy, you can actually go into say what to take of the service, particularly when you know that the audience who are equally going to be staying to to watch. So, and we call it use rating to to say hey, which program is more popular with this guy? What do they like, and how do they like it? Okay, so um, do you work with creatives to develop program? You no, know, at times there are these there are programs brand look out for. So do you work with them to create programs in which these brands are willing to collaborate with, and how do you do this? Yeah, you see, that of course is largely dependent on the clients. There are cases where, no, no, not really what they want. I, I mean, their understanding of the role of media, of media independent and what we bring to the table in terms of value. Because really, if anything, if there's anything that is good with the media independent, that's the fact that they have an array of data. They actually are washed with data that can actually help in guiding and shaping the creative direction. Some clients are smart enough to involve their media agency at the early so that location. because really the business is all about collaboration, really. And for me, I would rather find a situation where we collaborate at the very early stage rather really than wait behind and you finish the creative and, and you just, just drop it on me, go and please. Wow. In fact, it's the point of I will, there are cases where you would have even done the schedule before they show you the material. Oh. Because me seeing the material alone give me a sense of okay. saying, wow, this yeah, advert sure. will be very apt in this place. Yeah. But if I don't see it, and I'm just getting it at the point of deployment. There's little or nothing I can do. do so oftentimes, it's, it's, it's always good to involve all agencies at the very early stage so that we can all 
the, the, there will be synergy together, yes. and we can be added in one direction, one direction rather than the creative talking to B why the media is talking to him, and yeah, before so. you know, it, he has kind of a decision. So aside aside of practicing, I, I also learned here a bit of education is to teach people, especially when it comes to marketing and advertising. How trainable you think young people are? Especially these days, everybody just want to want to make money. Well, I must confess that uh, the young lad, some many of them are trainable. They are very trainable. It's just that um, a couple of them they they focus on the wrong thing really. Because it's only if you get attracted to the profession by the number of jeeps, the number of suits you see. So even when people are talking, thing, you yeah. find out that it's only the suit that you see that thing. But for me, rather than that, if you take the pain to pull back to say, hey, what's driving this jeep? What's driving mm -hmm. this? You should be interested in what is driving people than what, what they, they drive. Driving. That's it. Okay. But for, for most of our youth, really, but anytime when I have the opportunity of lecturing, I try as much as possible to bring it home to let them know their no. couple. And I keep on telling people, in Nigeria now, we are working with so many case studies that you don't need to look, you don't need to travel to, you don't need to come on looking to develop market to bring so in case studies. So. There are relatable cases here that you present. And how we equally present our material to them equally matters. Mm. What you say in life is not as important as how you say it. Jeez. And how you say it might not be as important as when it is said. Mm. So we equally need to be to understand the orientation of people these days. Okay. They are young, they are restless. So you need to know how to maturely calm them down, mm -hmm. let them see. And if you're able to do that, you find out that they flow easily. Richie. And if they're able to combine that with their with their restless nation, you find out that they are even eager to learn more. Yeah, at least from what I've seen. I've seen but there are a couple of them too. One of the things that I do is equally to manage to match your word with your action. I've seen mm. a couple of them, ah, I love the way you your lecture. I enjoy your lecture. I want you to be my mentor. I say, yeah. hey, you don't need to come to me. <laughs> I don't have people who mentored me. I don't even know them. I've not met them, but I see them from afar. And, and I think what I need to think them. out of them. So please, feel free. I was actually impressed when I was opportune to deliver a lecture at uh, UBA House in Marina. And a little word got to me and said, Sanika, there's no lecture you deliver anywhere that I've not been to. Wow. And she was citing an example. You did this, you did this. And I said, look, I just like your passion. I just like your this. I've been training you. You are my mentor from afar. The passion is there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, I was impressed with that. I don't mm -hmm. even know. In fact, now I can't even recall her. Mm -hmm. She only sent me one time. Yeah. She didn't even collect my card. Wow. Meaning I'm not even interested in knowing you, but I track you. you. Yeah, so I think you have me. what I need, and I'm still in it. Rather than those who walk up to you, I say, I like you. I can like you. Okay. I say, so people say, I like you. I have this idea. I'm going to send it to you till tomorrow. They've not no sent sorry. anything. <laughs> but because of the euphoria of the moment, the moment of that lecture, they don't walk up to you. they came from it. So I think they are, they are very trainable. It's just for us to see how we continually fine tune our curriculum in a way that will appeal to them. Mm -hmm. The way we are taught is not the way this is going to be taught. We need to fine tune that, make it interesting and attractive them. to them, and they will, they will care. Talking of making uh, things interesting and attractive, how can we make, for example, a, a, a content production company that produces developmental program, how can we make it attractive to people? To audience, especially when we're comparing it to entertainment, because a lot of people just want to watch things that make them laugh, make them smile, and then that is this is what most advertisers, most of brands are looking out for. They're looking out for programs that are fun, they're looking out for music shows, music countdowns, and movies. How can content produ producers that produce community development programs, how can they get more sponsors? That, that's where I beg to differ. Mm -hmm. Because you see, it's important for you to understand the passion point mm -hmm. of people. But why the passion point of the young generation? Mm -hmm. You just said it. Sport, music, what makes them laugh, what makes them laugh. Is developmental program averse to laughing? Hmm. True. Is developmental program averse to sports? Is developmental program averse to music? If they are not averse, why not bring it in? Yeah. Okay. Who says a two face cannot be on a development program as is? If two, a two face is your idol, let him speak yeah, about development. Yeah. If Ola Mide is your passion, is your passion if it's your idol, if somebody you say is your celebrity, let them come and speak about development. I was opportune to be part of people who are putting together something that has to do with pharma. No. And lo and behold, I was telling them to say, do you know that Two-Face has a large farm? farm. Well, if it does, well, so imagine when those, those young guys who are seeing only his music now see his farming. They will second hand thing, wouldn't they be interested? Definitely. That is they what would. we need to. We need to see how we the constantly synergy. create that synergy. There's nothing. We don't need to put on our thinking cap. To, to see, there must be a link. And once you are able to create that link without really compromising your focus, your aim, or corporate objectives, and the very good chance of being achieved easily, flawlessly, and they will flow. So finally, finally, what advice 
would you give any young person that's watching this show who's aspiring to become something, something worth it in life? My advice is simple. Mm -hmm. And I'll say it in the local language, Farabale. <laughs> it should calm down. Calm down. It should calm down. It should calm down. The value, the money you are looking for we will come, mm. but you need to invest. Yeah. If you don't sow, the two early books that I know, both the Bible and the Quran said, what you sow is what, what you reap. reap. But most people are not patient to sow, <laughs> but they are eager to reap. To reap. Let them take the part to sow by deepening themselves, investing in themselves, developing themselves. Naturally, the money will flow. Thank you very, very much, sir. It's been a very, very interesting time in the city. I've learned a lot. I'm very sure people who are watching too much have grabbed one or two things. Thank you very much for liking our call. We hope like when we call you next, you're definitely going to give us a positive answer. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Sadly, this will be got to the end of today's episode of The Magnet. Join me next week as I bring to you fresh edition of this program. Do not forget to follow us on all our social media and those at The Magnet TV on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're interested in partnering or sponsoring this program, you can reach us on our website at www.insmedia.com.ng or call the number on your screen. Till you meet next week, I am Ibrahim Olagujo. Bye for now.